WrestleMania six, Hulk Hogan versus the Ultimate Warrior. The first, the first pay per view I ever talked my parents into buying, as well as Saturday Night's main event from. I never did that. You never, never talked talk your parents into buying no. a single pay per view. Like once or twice, I was able to save up my money and buy it for myself, but otherwise they would not. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. My my parents very strongly, they uh, they supported my wrestling habit. Yeah. It was more like they didn't care what I did. So you found your friend Craig who would support your wrestling habit. Well, yeah, you did too. Yeah. And then the network came and just ruined it all for us. Right. But anyway, it was the first pay-per-view I ever bought. <laughs> they ruined it by cutting the prices by 80%. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, they we ruined have... get-togethers. No one yeah, gets together for pay-per-views anymore. We haven't got together since the pay-per-view was nine ninety nine. That's true. That's actually a good point. We've you know almost I mean? never watched one. Which, movies. you know, now that I think about it, I wonder if that's why nobody watches wrestling anymore, because it used to be something you got together once a month with your friends. It was a communal thing. Now everyone lost all their friends. Sure. And they didn't care about wrestling anymore. Like, how many times do we get together for a pay-per-view that none of us wanted to watch? All the time. Yeah. The entire TNA weekly run. Exactly. But then once once you didn't have to get together and there was no excuse, then you just didn't watch the show. Sure. I never thought about this before. Hmm. Hmm. Well, anyway, I suppose we should talk about Hogan and Warrior first because it went first. That, that makes sense, sense to, me. to me. Well, let me tell you something, everybody. I watched this match a million times when I was a kid. I have watched it now multiple times as an adult. The most recent time being Thursday. And believe it or not, I think the match is even better than ever Hmm. watching it nowadays. I fucking loved this match. Now, was it it like a five-star match? No. But was it way... Here's the thing. I always knew that the match was better than I expected it to be and better than it should have been. But I think that because we've been watching all of these Saturday Night's main events, Mm -hmm. including the one that we watched last week, where the Warrior faced Dino Bravo, Mm -hmm. and it was a fucking atrocity. And the Andre match was worse. Bro, after seeing those matches, this match was even more incredible. When you watch the Hogan-Warrior match, the reason this match is so good is because there's one thing that Warrior really isn't good at. Only one? Well, there's a lot. But his main issue is his cardio. Sure. His cardio is fucking terrible. So the way that they design this match, which they practice multiple times, Mm -hmm. it is a total conservation of the Warriors energy match. Hmm. The guy sprints his ass to the ring, which Jess even says, "Is is this a wise idea? He burns a bunch of energy at the beginning of the match, and then what do they start with? Well... They start with a test of strength. Yes. And they stand there and they hold each other's hands for like five minutes. And they do a lot of nothing to build to Warrior firing up and doing this big series of hot moves going crazy. Then he gets cut off again and they lay on the mat. And there's a long bear hug spot and everything like that. And all of this builds to the next big thing where Warrior has to expend a lot of energy. And, of course, then there's another, you know, they slow it down. And then finally Hogan does his big comeback. And the end of this match where Hogan does, Warrior hits the big, the, the, he finally hits the press slam. Which, when you see how blown up this guy is, it's a fucking miracle. The hand of God reached down and lifted up Hulk Hogan by his fucking trousers to help him get up in the air for this, this deal. Warrior hits a big splash. Hogan kicks out. The place goes crazy. Hogan does the whole Hulk up, the three punches, he hits that big boot, and he hits that those ropes for that big leg drop, and Warrior rolls out of the way. And it's beautiful because the way they filmed it, the, the guy that's filming it is standing in the corner. And he's, he's kind of looking down. They must have got like Andre the Giant because he's somehow looking down on these two men in the corner. And Hogan leaps in the air for the leg drop, and the camera goes up with him so you don't see the warrior. And so when Hogan starts to come down, that's when you realize the fucking warrior's not there anymore. And Hogan lands on his ass, and he does the big sell of his back, and fucking warrior hits the ropes and hits a big splash and pins him, and Hogan kicks out at 3.2. Fucking, I rewound that finish like 50 times. It was so perfect. And Hogan selling, and the camera work, and the angle, 
and the kicking out of the splash, but then getting hit with the splash after his move failed. This match was awesome. And it was a perfect match for the Warrior. They they paced it perfectly, which he could never do, I don't think, again, till he faced Randy Savage. But it was a perfectly paced match for him. There was no downtime. Every move meant something. Although, when Hogan hurt his knee, that ended up not meaning anything. I don't know what no. the fuck that was all about. But when I was a kid, I believed Gorilla Monsoon when he said that Hogan must have hyperextended his patella and it slipped back in. I bought that hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> when in reality, he just stopped selling. Yes. But anyway, I thought the match was great. I loved it. It was perfect for what it was. It could not have been better. Like, with those two no, guys God, no. on that day, it literally could not have been better. If they tried this match a thousand more times, it would have been worse a thousand more times. Fucking amazing match. I loved it. It was a. It was beautiful in its simplicity. Yeah. There, there, there was a... They didn't do a whole lot. Yes. Like yes. the biggest the biggest spot was probably a belly to back suplex and maybe a regular suplex. Those were the big high spots in the match, aside from a running shoulder block, a flying shoulder block, excuse me. But um it was very simple, very well paced. It was great storytelling. Mm -hmm. and so oh, that's sorry. what made it that's what made it so good. So we'll get into a little detail here. We don't need to go into a lot because, again, it was nearly a half hour. Uh, Warrior comes out first. Then Hogan does his big entrance. The announcers are claiming the Sky Dome crowd is split 50-50. I think it was at least 80-20 in favor of Hogan. They didn't hate Warrior by any means, but Hogan was their guy, clearly. Warrior, I don't know how much Aquanet he used. His hair is just massive. Just I, huge. I wrote bon John Bon Jovi-esque. Yes, yes. But Hogan, with no hair, was still taller. Hogan's a big, big dude, and Warrior honestly looked a little small next to him. So, yes, like the very first thing they did almost is the greatest test of strength you ever saw in your life. They got so much. The Greco-Roman yes. knuckle lock. Dude, has Granny seen this match? Uh, no, I don't think so. It's the power knuckle lock to end all power knuckle locks. Yes, the There's power a, knuckle hold. Excuse me, power knuckle hold. There's never been a power knuckle hold any better than this one. And all it is, they're just pretending to push each other down. And Hogan goes down first, and he pops up. And then Warrior goes down, and he pops up. And Hogan does a leg trip, and they start to wrestle. Now, I said that in 10 seconds. I swear to God, they got three minutes out of it. Mm -hmm. And the place is going crazy for it. Like, seriously, every wrestling school in the world needs to study this test of strength to how to get the absolute most out of nothing. Well, the key to the test of strength was one of the stories of the entire match, which was the tagline... It is the unstoppable force meeting the immovable yes. object. The, the, so, like, everything about this match was that these men are equals. Yeah. Well, kind of. Well, because... first Hogan won the test of strength, then yes. Warrior won. Yes. And they did the big spot at the beginning where first, you know, or it was the lock up and then the shove into the corner. They, they took turns doing the shove in the corner. Everything was a take turns equality. Yes. But then the third one, Hogan hit a body slam. Warrior popped up, beat his chest defiant. Warrior hit a body slam. Hogan was beaten, rolled outside, and said his knee was hurt. He was slightly better. Yes. A, a foreshadowing. There, there was foreshadowing in this great storytelling going on here. So, like, ten minutes has gone by, and I've skipped virtually nothing. <laughs> so, th there's a long segment in the middle where Hogan is working holds. They're not resting. They're not lying there like a Dusty Rhodes or Andre the Giant Mets, but they're not doing that much. And two notes. First of all, there's a point here. I, I think every show I review of modern WWE television, the first thing I bitch about is the camera work because it's the worst part of the show. There is a point where they do, there's like a, it's just a chin lock, but they do like the Okada Rainmaker shot in reverse where Okada does his pose and it's all tight shot, and he does his pose, do the rapid zoom out. They go to a wide stadium shot and slowly zoom in on this tiny little ring and these tiny little wrestlers. So it zooms all the way up into a close-up and just makes the whole thing feel so epic because these men are doing Warrior at a huge, massive stadium. Well, it was epic. Yes, yes. So they do a bit of a high spot somewhere in there, and, and Warrior, who's been selling for several minutes, he... Uh, makes a brief comeback. They do a double clothesline for the double down. And 
You mentioned, Brian, the worst thing about Ultimate Warrior, and it was a long list of categories, but his worst thing was his cardio. I would say his best thing is for a guy whose whole gimmick was he was the Ultimate Warrior and he never lost, this dude could sell his ass off. This yeah, dude because he was sympathy. fucking dying. <laughs> he was trying, maybe why? <laughs> Bro, this guy was sucking wind like yes. you never saw. Holy God. But after he's being held down for five minutes. He hits this one flurry of offense, and there's a double down. The ref counts like five, and Warrior rolls over, and the pace goes crazy because they're into him now. And that starts Warrior's no-selling comeback. He, he, he does a mini hulk-up. He starts shaking the ropes. He's running in place as Hogan's punching me, no-sells everything. And these, this, uh, this no-selling comeback leads into the bear hug of inactivity. There's 70,000 people or whatever chanting for Hogan's name. We're 20 minutes in now. So, there's a point here where the referee gets bumped, which I had totally forgotten about. And both guys end up getting covers, but the ref is out. Now, Hogan gets the first one. Hogan goes to make a cover. There's no referee. Well, let's talk about this. I'm going to. How does Hogan get this cover? Well, the Warrior went for a shoulder tackle. Yes. And missed and was pinned. (laughs) We were to believe... That Hulk Hogan was going to win the main event of WrestleMania because the Ultimate Warrior missed a shoulder block. Well, my friend, the only person that can beat the Warrior is the Warrior. Apparently. Apparently. (laughs) And it's the funniest damn spot, too, because the Warrior's got three moves. Hogan saw this coming, and Warrior's doing the bit where he hits the ropes like four times to, to build up all sorts of momentum. And Hogan just steps aside, grabs him by the face, and pushes him down. The Warrior had that one coming. So... We get the first spot with the sloppy gorilla press, as I noted, because, again, Warrior was near death. He was on fumes. But he gets the gorilla press and the big splash. Hulk kicks out and does the... It, and now it's, it's, it's 90. Was this 90? 1990. This is now classic Hulkamania comeback. It we was every, every comeback we've ever seen from this point. Three punches, big fi- boot, finger point, all of it. If you, if you hated Hulk Hogan at this time, you were... You were beside yourself because you yes. thought Hogan was going to win. Yes. So he, as Brian noted, he does the whole routine, goes to the leg drop, misses the leg drop for, it may have happened, but no one ever kicked out of the leg drop. I don't think anyone ever missed it, honestly, until now. And Warrior immediately pounces, hits a splash for the second try. It's just enough to finish Hulk Hogan off. It's a fucking great match. I've been thinking about this now. I watched this uh, uh, Saturday night and... We've been watching a lot of Warrior at Saturday Night's Main Event and some of the pay-per-views here and there. And Warrior, I think, had like five good matches his entire career. He had Savage at Mania, Savage at SummerSlam, Rick Rude at Mania and SummerSlam, and this Hogan match here. So when you say, well, it's great for an Ultimate Warrior match, you would be correct. But listen, this was a great wrestling match for anyone. Yeah, it's but it was tremendous. But the key is like it played into everything of, of like you could me and you could not go in and do this match. Right. I mean we could, but nobody would give a we, shit. We are physical, one. For many reasons. But yes, the I whole the whole thing was the story they told and who they were and yes. the twists and turns based on each person's moves that they normally did. That's what made the match great. I also love, by the way, when the referee gets bumped, it's Hebner, and this dude's dead. And he slowly, he does a groggy comeback, and he does a one, two, and the guy kicks out, ah, and goes crazy. Man, when Warrior hit that splash, this motherfucker rounded the bases, <laughs> and he fucking slid into home plate and did the greatest three count you ever saw for that pinfall. It was so awesome. Everything about this was perfect. That's my, that's my review. Uh, yes. Incredible match. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.